Renewables are increasing my energy bills. This is something Danielle Smith might say. And you may have seen charts like this or this from people like Mark Mills, but no one could have predicted how quickly renewable costs would fall. Using Mills' same reference today, you can see that the IEA notoriously underpredicts installations and ExxonMobil is predicting much higher renewable targets than ever before. We're so wrong, in fact, that the US has 300 gigawatts of installed renewables, and last year alone, China installed 300 gigawatts of solar and wind. Why would a country like China be installing so much solar and wind if renewables are more expensive? This perception comes from a couple main reasons, and there are cases where renewables lose out to fossil fuels on cost. The first being due to older systems, and the second one is due to market dynamics. In regards to older systems, renewables just beat out fossil fuels on costs, meaning that a renewable system made up of older units will cost more than a conventional system, as you can see here. For solar, it beat out the bottom end of fossil fuels in 2022, and onshore wind in 2019. So although renewables are cheaper now, you wouldn't expect our renewable systems as a whole to be cheaper yet. And that's what we see using Germany, Spain, and the EU as an example. Though last month, Spain had so much renewable power, they've been offshooting it to, guess who? France. France traditionally has been a net exporter of energy, but they've been importing Spanish renewable energy because it's so incredibly cheap. So take the data that I'm showing with a bit of a grain of salt, because once you pay off your renewable systems, then they become even cheaper. That's something I'm not taking into account for this analysis. Moving on to that, the total renewable systems don't yet beat out traditional fossil fuel systems, which would lead to higher costs in this case. That's not an argument against renewables, it's one to vastly increase renewable utilization to bring more cheap power onto the grid for people. But in my Destiny vs. Jordan Peterson debate analysis video, I showed that Spain had vastly cheaper energy than Germany, even though they had similar energy prices. And this is why energy markets matter. I'm going to oversimplify this a lot, but the general principle remains. The way energy markets work in most places is that at any given time, your distributor of power asks the power system companies for energy, and the suppliers put up their hand and say, I can supply X megawatts at X price. The power system suppliers then buy that energy from lowest to highest, then sells it back to you. You can see that a system like this can lead to extremely high energy prices when renewable systems are low. Since fossil fuel plants can ramp up and down, they have a de facto monopoly on energy for a short time frame, which they use to maximize their profits, as we've seen here in Alberta. I don't blame them, that's the system that we use. It's called market liberalization, and it was great for bringing the cost of fossil fuel energy prices down 30 years ago. However, now that we're moving to more variable energy sources, the market dynamics need to change. The minimum job of any capitalist government should be to ensure that the market works to provide the best services for the citizens. That's clearly not the case, so how do we fix it? One is called the Capacity Renumeration Mechanism, CRM, and then the second is Long-Term Power Purchase Agreements, PPAs. For CRMs, generators receive a payment for being ready to supply power. This is a mechanism largely for fossil fuel plants and batteries and transmission that act as peaker plants when renewables go down. PPAs give investors in renewable systems more predictable revenues through long-term contracts. Neither of these systems would be as necessary in the long term, though, as fully renewable systems with battery storage and transmission would work under a fully liberalized market. This is more of a transition period. Essentially, the way that it works is suppliers will provide a cost in megawatts they're willing to supply at any given time for long-term contracts. Then distributors buy it after that point day to day. This graphic kind of shows you what I mean. First, we have the current market where renewables are operating at low costs. Adding in battery storage and long-line transmission can mitigate it but studies still suggest moving to longer-term contracts better encourage renewable uptake. Now look at the system with these new types of contracts. The cost of power doesn't change, just who you get that power from. Not only does this lower the overall carbon emissions, since natural gas plants operating at 10% is the same as operating at 100% with carbon capture, without the negative consequence of lowering your power output, but fossil fuel companies will still make money, they just can't monopolize it as well. As more battery and transmission systems are added, the need for fossil fuels reduce, causing a positive feedback loop. This is a good time to talk about monopolies. In a free market economy like ours, monopolies or oligopolies usually occur, in cases with high fixed costs, or when competition doesn't really make sense. Think airplanes, pharmaceuticals, emergency healthcare, telecommunications, and energy generation. We should want the market to work for us and provide us with the lowest prices possible. That clearly doesn't work when monopolies occur, so you need government intervention to ensure this doesn't happen. Hence why CPM contracts are great. When paired with carbon taxes, they encourage investment into battery and transmission development while keeping fossil fuels only as long as they're necessary. Price caps would be your last line of defense against monopolies, but they tend to be poorly implemented, resulting in a lack of investment. But they still can work and seem to have worked in Spain. Overall, changing energy markets is mostly an institutional change. As you keep the same system, you just make the market work better for us. Building more renewables is just a no-brainer based on costs. Encouraged by changing energy market demands, this has the added benefit of working within a capitalist framework in that there's no mandate to shut down coal or natural gas plants while we still need them, but rather the market will decide what system is best, and they'll retire accordingly. 
This is further encouraged by a carbon tax. Also, this is what Mark Mill's chart actually looks like now for retail and wholesale price. You can see that the trend has decreased, and since renewables include hydro, this is what the chart should actually look like, showing no relationship between energy generation from renewables and costs. For some reason, we always forget about hydro, even though every study that I've ever provided includes hydro being about 15% of our total energy demands in order to meet these renewable targets. There's a lot of other factors and confounding variables that determine energy prices. What we do know right now is that renewables are the cheapest option, and changing our energy markets will bring you, the consumer, the lowest prices. Thank you for watching and follow me for more if this stuff is interesting to you.